Okay, so before we get into the calculation, did you do anything to the equation? Yeah, so balance. So how do you balance this one? Yeah, so the only thing that really needs a coefficient is the sodium nitrate there. Okay, so everything else looks good. Okay. So if we have a molar mass for sodium carbonate of 105.96, Okay, so if you do that, 40 divided by that is 0.378 moles. Okay, so how many moles of calcium nitrate? Yeah, so for this one, again, it's a one-to-one -one reaction, right? So that means that you would have 0.378. Okay. So did everybody see that? Okay. And now that you have 0.378 moles of calcium nitrate, now we need its molar mass. So 40.078, 14, 1 times 2, and then 15.99. Six of those. Okay, so so therefore, to get the mass of calcium nitrate is point three seven eight moles times one sixty four point oh three eight grams per mole. So that's 61.9 grams of calcium nitrate needed. Okay. Okay, so is everybody cool with that? Okay, so you need about 62 grams of calcium nitrate, and so let's add that many grams. So we've added 40 grams, 50 grams, 60 grams, 61, 62, okay, so right around 62 grams. And then your other reaction or your other reactant goes away. Okay, so both of these have turned in fully into products. Okay, and so another another way to think about it is that um, if you need sixty one point nine grams of calcium nitrate, if you only have um, let's say two grams of calcium nitrate that's added, then that means that the other one is gonna be an excess. 
Okay, so we don't have, if we need 61.9, but we only have um, two grams, that means that we have to add more, in other words. Okay, so that's when we you know, go up to 62, and now we would say that we have a stoichiometric amount of both of these reactants now. Okay, so all we have are products. Okay, so this, this website, um, you know, again, the link is here, will kind of, you know, give you extra practice. You know, it's got a few other equations here that, you know, you can balance and then work out, uh, for instance, um, these different amounts. Um, what would be a tricky one? Let's see. So three. Uh, yeah, what about this one? Let's do this one here. So iron chloride, iron three chloride. Okay, and in this one, I want you, so we'll say 20 grams, okay, of sodium hydroxide. It goes into this, plus sodium chloride. Okay, so if we have that many grams, I want you to calculate a couple things. I want you to calculate how many grams of that you need to react, and then I want to know how much of this is going to be produced. Sodium chloride. Okay. So, and then this one, I guess you're going to have to know molar masses again. So we'll say 22.99. For this problem, for the first half of it, we're just looking at, like, when you're comparing the coefficients, we're going to look at the first one, but then when we're doing the second half, you're looking at the other coefficient? Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Yep. So you're, yeah, it's going to be really two separate questions. Yeah. So you're going to first do, you know, the conversion from here to here. And then you're going to, um, you know, pick one of them and go like there to there, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. And then iron is 55.85. And chlorine, 35.45. Hydrogen is 1.01. .01. Okay. All right, so I'm going to pause the video again here and then let you work it out. Again, ask, ask questions at any stage of this that you're confused on. I don't uh, expect these kinds of questions to be like your entire exam are these questions exclusively. Out of 30 total questions, you may have three of these types of questions. Just because, you know, they take a fair amount of time to work these out. Um, half of the exam will be really contextual questions related to chapters three and four. Um, and then on chapter three, we're really uh, starting um, right after, you know, I introduced all the different regions of the UV spectrum. So that's kind of where it's starting all the way to the end. And then for chapter four, all of the chapter except you know the context stuff we talked about today so i'm not going to talk or ask questions about cap and trade carbon tax um you know all of those kinds of things okay but uh but about you know what is the greenhouse effect um you know those kinds of questions you know how does uh i guess what happens when molecules absorb infrared, you know, stretching, you know, or bending, that kind, but not details about, you know, which kind of stretch is responsible. I won't ask that on this exam. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so maybe let's do, so step one is balancing. And so what do you think for balancing? What did you get there? Okay, I'm seeing one three one three. OK. 
Okay, let's put that, uh, what about this color? Oh, that's a nice color. One, three, okay, so let's see. So one iron, three sodiums, three chlorines, uh, three oxygens, and three hydrogen. Yes, yep. Okay, so that is the balanced coefficients then. If I can move that a little, there we go. Okay, so then, um, you know, step one is we want to know moles of sodium hydroxide. So did anybody get the molar mass of sodium hydroxide yet? Thirty nine point nine 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 yeah twenty nine twenty two plus another fifty and then one point oh one is yeah thirty nine point nine 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 okay so we get I mean right around point five oh a question I think it is point one five three four Oh, okay. So the final answer. Okay, we'll see. Okay, so 20 divided by that, okay, gives you 0.5, yeah, I guess 0 0.500 moles of sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we want to know now moles of iron 3 chloride. So how do we get that. Okay, so if we know that it's 0.5 for sodium hydroxide, yeah, we look at this ratio now is a 3 to 1, right? So in other words, we can say that, you know, moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of iron 3 chloride is a 3 to 1. Okay, so if I have 0.5 of this one, how many of that? Okay, so in other words, you divide by 3. Okay, does everybody see that? Okay. Can you explain one more time why you divide and not multiply? Yeah, for sure. Yep, so in this case, We've calculated this, right, so the sodium hydroxide, but that is three times the moles of iron chloride that we're interested in, right? So we have to divide by three, okay? So the reason, so we would have to multiply by three if we first did this, the iron chloride, and we wanted to go to sodium hydroxide, then it would be three times as much. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so in this case, it's really three times less, if you will, okay, uh, moles of iron chloride. Okay. All right, so point... Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So point 0.5 divided by 3 is 0.167 moles. Okay. And so then the third step is to calculate grams of iron 3 chloride and so we would do 0.167 times its molar mass okay and so that would be 55.85 and then 35.45 times 3 is 162.2 So that's 27.1 grams of iron 3 chloride needed. Okay. So the first part, okay. So why do we divide by the atomic mass of, okay. Oh, yeah, so this 39.9, that is the uh, total 
atomic masses. So that is sodium plus oxygen plus hydrogen. Yeah, so it is always, yeah, it's always the molar mass that you get from adding up all the atomic masses. Yeah, does that make sense, Kaylee? The first atomic masses in um, the yeah so you only add the atomic masses together for the um, oh yeah so you only add it for the compound that you're given the mass for okay so if you're given mass of sodium hydroxide that is what you're taking the molar mass of then okay so you have to use just the molar mass of the compound you're given the mass, yeah? And then once you have moles, that's when you then convert it to moles of something else, yeah? And that's when we did this, step two, okay? And now we are going to do that final step of now you've got the molar mass for that FeCl compound. Yes, and you do take the subnumbers into account. Yeah, but you don't use any of these numbers. Okay, so the numbers in front, you don't take that into account in this last step. Okay, so that's how we got 162 was for iron plus three chlorines. Okay, is that 162? Okay, really good questions, you guys. Okay, so 27.1 grams, and so if I were to add that on here, 20, and then I go up to 27, there you go. Now your sodium hydroxide has all been used up, okay, and you don't have anything left of your reactants. Okay, we're, uh, we're not going to really get into... Um, doing much with limiting reagents this semester. I think I went really hardcore on it last semester and it was kind of really too complicated. Um, but the questions you'll be given are just like this, where you're given grams of only one of these reactants. So then you assume that the other one uh, doesn't influence the uh, grams of product, okay? And so in other words, you'll always follow this process, okay, where you know, you're given just grams of one component, so then you can do, you know, moles of it, convert moles of something else, and then grams, okay? You won't ever have to uh, decide which one to take. So the really complicated question would be, what if you have 20 grams of both of these? Now, you know, what is the limiting reagent, how much product will you get, all that stuff. So I'm not gonna go there this semester, okay? So, okay, so as long as this process is clear to you, then you'll be ready for any question I'll throw at you. Okay, so this is the question, I guess only one of the two, right? This is saying, if you have 20 grams of sodium hydroxide, you need 27.1 grams of iron chloride to react. Okay, now, how do you figure out how many grams of sodium chloride you'll produce here? Okay, and so you'll see it here. So our number should work out to 29.2. Okay, so let's do the calculation to, to prove that. Okay, so for this second part, um, we want to know grams of sodium chloride produced. Okay. So step one is to really, you know, use moles of something. Okay, and so we could say then, for instance, I guess any, uh, any suggestions on which one to take? So now we've got moles of sodium hydroxide and moles of iron three chloride. Which one should we take to make it easier on ourselves here? Okay. 
Uh, the second one, I mean, you, you could use either one, really. Um, but if you take the second one, so iron three chloride, you'll have to multiply it by three, right? With all my scribbles, let me, let me rewrite the equation down here because it's getting messy up there. Okay, so it's this. It's that plus that goes to, what is it? This plus that. Okay, and then we had, what do we have? A three there and a three there, okay. So here now we've got 0.167 moles and 0.5 moles. Okay, we wanna know that in grams, really. Okay, so what I'm saying is if you were to pick iron chloride, so if you take that number of moles, you have to multiply it by three Okay, versus if we take this one, it's a one-to-one, -one, right? So you could say that it's, you know, 0.5 moles, right? So either way, you know, it's fine. Whatever one you want to take, you will get 0.5 moles of sodium chloride produced. Okay. So does everybody see that? So the, the different ways to do the conversion. So this way, okay, where it's a three to three ratio, okay, or this one where it was a one to three. Okay, that's why you have to multiply it by three. Okay, so whatever way you want to go is fine. Okay, so then we have 0.5 moles of sodium chloride. So then to get grams, we just have to multiply by this molar mass. Okay, so that's, uh, what is it, 22.99 plus 35.45. So that's times 58.44. And that gives us, times 0.5, 29.2 grams. Okay, which matches what the calculator did. Okay. Okay, so questions about these types then? We're going to, of course, go through more because I put some of these on the practice midterm. So try those on your own. That's kind of your, your to-do list here before Wednesday. Go through that practice midterm homework assignment. Work through all the questions, but you know, especially these kind. And then on Wednesday, I'm just going to go through all the questions. Okay, go through detailed solutions to everything. Okay, does that sound good? All right, and, and just to remind you, if you got on the call late, um, based on your input, um, that you would prefer to take the exam next Monday. So your exam then is going to be Monday April, is that 6th, I think? Um, let me just double check. Uh, calendar. Yes, yeah, so Monday, April 6th, and you will have all day to take it. So we won't have a live lecture next Monday, just in case this time works best for you um, with your busy days. And so uh, you can take it anytime. I'll give you two hours to take it. You'll have plenty of time. You'll have to use lockdown browser. So again, make sure you test that everything before next Monday. Um, and you'll need a webcam, computer with a webcam or an iPad. It'll work on that too. Okay. And so, uh, so yeah, Wednesday we'll go through the practice midterm and uh, I'll take extra questions then. All right, so any, any other questions before we sign off then? Okay. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Stay safe.